Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, so today is going to be a little bit different from my usual videos and I'll tell you why. So right now I'm currently posting a video every single day for Vlogmas. I do not know if this video is going to go up during that time or after the fact, but I wanted to film it in the moment so you guys can experience the emotions that I'm going through with me and I'll tell you why. So first of all, I've always said from day one, and if you guys have been around for a really long time, I apologize. This is a total repeat. I say it all the time, but it's unfair of me to come in here and be sunshine and roses and happy all the time and try to help you out with your trials and tribulations as a prison wife. If I also didn't come in and show you my own emotions, real and raw and painful and the pain I, and, and the experiences that I go through when I'm feeling down, because because then you it's easier for me to be relatable to you guys like this life is hard life itself is hard and so if I was just going into somebody's YouTube channel and they were happy all the time I don't think I'd be able to relate to them and that said I follow a lot of people in all different spaces you know like makeup girls and people who do health and fitness and when they go in and they're emotional and vulnerable on camera and they share things through tears I always feel like I can relate to them better because they're not some larger than life personality that's just not attainable it's like oh you are a normal person too so that said I wanted to share an issue that happened last night and I will it's not prison wife related. It's not prison wife related, but it is, and I will bring it back to prison wife life, and I will pass along a lesson to you guys, like I try to always do. So, background story: you guys know if you've been following me for like a minute, a lot of my vlogmas videos has been have been dedicated to the fact that I take care of my sick mother. She um, has been fighting cancer she's probably towards the end of her life as much as I do not want to admit that um, it's not probably she is towards the end of her life right now she's not quite hospice yet but we're probably a couple months away from that so um, it's been stressful you know I, I've dedicated majority of my time here's how my time is spent nine to five job that pays the bills I work out you know an hour a day four or five six days a week I um, run strong prison wives and families I make these videos for you guys and then I take care of my mother and uh, once a month I go to visit so those are like all of my priorities I do not do a lot of stuff you know like obviously I do my self-love and self-care but like I don't go out with friends very often um I do when I when I can but right now it's hard for me to leave my mother alone so I do I cook for her I clean for her I help change her at night you guys have come run through this with me the weekends that I'm not there when I'm going to see Adam I make sure there's backup I make sure my sister stop by and see her I make sure my father will be around um, my father does work a lot he does live with us just to paint the picture for you guys so last night my sister-in-law dropped off her three kids at my house before I got home I guess she called my mom to see if she could stay with the kids the kids could stay with her her kids are really good the oldest is 12 but she's like a mini mommy takes care of the three-year-old who's a big of a bit of a handful so they're really no work they're very good they're very quiet um however when their cousins come over my sister's three kids they get excited and it turns into a daycare it turns into mayhem in the house and that's what happened so i got home from the gym the three kids the older kid i'm sorry my brother's kids were there the ones that are really good um and at the same time, my middle sister, who doesn't come around very often, it's kind of a stressful situation that I won't get into, she was over for her visit with her pit bull. So there are already people there. There was already kind of a little bit hectic, although it was okay. Then my mother's friend and her daughter stopped by to visit my mom. And then within, then I came home, and then within like five minutes, my older sister and her three kids came over. So it got really loud. It got very out of control the kids got really loud they were running around the dog was running around the kids were afraid of the dog the dog was chasing the kids he just want she just wanted to play um it was already high stress because of the stress that goes on with um the situation surrounding my middle sister that doesn't come over very often when she does it's like high emotions because my mother gets happy that she's there and then when she's not around he, my mom doesn't hear from her for a little while so it gets stressful around that so my dad was um taking care of stuff like 
uh, the house is kind of in shambles. We just got wood floors. We were trying to get them in time for my sister's wedding, which was at the end of October. It didn't happen. So waiting for like rugs and furniture to be delivered before we could put the house back together. So there's furniture all piled up in one room. The other room's kind of empty with um, one couch, the TV, which is on like a fake TV stand, and then two snack trays as end table. So it's it's a mess in the house right now. He's trying to get stuff done. He's also working full time at the restaurant slash, slash pizzeria family this business that he runs with my brother. So when things like that happens and the kids are all out of control and it's high stress, my father gets very overly stimulated and overwhelmed. And the way that he deals with his emotions is that, and this has happened my whole entire life, it's just his makeup and his nature and it's how he deals, is he has these like emotional outbursts and then he'll go like sulk somewhere. So he'll say things he doesn't mean to say, he'll do things he doesn't mean to do, and it's just the way that he knows how to deal with his emotions, get them all out, and then kind of cower because it came out the wrong way. Well, that's what happened last night, but I had no idea what was going on. So I am sitting there at this point, it's my middle sister, the dog, all the kids on my bro my brother's kids, my sister's over. Um, I think at this point, um, my mother's friend and her daughter had left. I get a call. It's a work call. So I excused myself and I went upstairs. I took the call. All the call was, was to schedule a follow-up call. So basically it was a two, literally a two minute call. While I was upstairs and I was on this call, I started putting away some laundry that had been sitting in a basket for a couple of days in my room. So I just figured after I hung up the call, I would stay up there and just finish putting away these clothes. Because I think in my, in my head, I'm like, when else am I going to do this? It's been sitting here. I don't have like socks and underwear to grab in the morning when I'm getting ready for work because they're all sitting here in this laundry basket. Because you know, hashtag prison wife life. I was at visit a couple weeks ago and I missed a week of laundry. So I had a whole bunch piling up all done, ready to be put away. That's what I did. In the meantime, I could hear my older sister with her kids getting ready to leave. She was going to take the other kids with her because my nephew, the oldest one, had a basketball game and she wanted to go. So they were trying to get me to come downstairs to stay with the baby. I didn't hear, I didn't know what was going on. So I said, I will be down in five minutes. I'm just finishing something. They're assuming I'm still on the phone. When I go downstairs, the house is literally mayhem kids are screaming my older sister's warming up the car her daughter is having an emotional meltdown being a straight brat i'm sorry to put that out there on youtube but she's being a straight brat she wanted to stay with her cousin she's screaming at her mother no i'm not going i'm trying to help her go my sister's getting upset my sister finally is like i'm coming back in the house comes back in the house grabs her and was like are you kidding me you're not going to listen to me when i talk to you turns to me and says kind of like mouths to me answer your phone. I need to call and tell you something. Okay. I'm like, what the hell is going to happen now? So she calls me. I answer the phone. She said, can anyone else hear me? I said, it's just me, the baby. I was feeding him dinner and my middle sister was washing dishes. We're all, we're, we're the only ones in the room. She said, I just want to let you know that dad was having an emotional outburst and it was all because of you. And I was like, me, what did I do? And she goes, apparently you do nothing to help mom. You don't clean anything in the house. All you do is sit on your phone and he's stuck doing everything. And literally I was at the point where I started shaking. I was like, talk me off the ledge right now. She goes, you know, he didn't mean it. He was just pissed off having an emotional outburst. He can't handle, there was too much overstimulation. Sure. But at the same time, in my opinion, when you have an emotional, emotional outburst like that, it's like truth serum. And so your emotions are coming out of your mouth. The things that you've held in for a while and you're biting your tongue, you're so angry that it's like word vomit and it all just comes out of your mouth, your true feelings. So frankly, I was angry, but I was also very hurt. My life is dedicated to taking care of my mother right now, including taking care of my mother are doing the chores that she can no longer do, like cleaning up after everybody. When the kids leave, fixing up the house, cooking for the whole family, including changing her, doing her laundry, you know, helping her brush her teeth, getting her settled into bed, getting her oxygen taken care of, and all of this stuff. I am only, here come the tears, I'm sorry you guys, I know I'm going to get emotional during this video, hence the sunglasses, but I just wanted to come on here while the emotions are raw, 
so I can talk through them and show you guys that you're not alone when you struggle and suffer with things. And, and Adam was involved. I'm sorry this is turning into a long background story time, but I have to give it to you so you can understand where the emotions came from and how I worked through them with Adam and everything. So, I don't, yes, there were a couple of days where I left a couple of dishes in the sink. I did not expect my father to do them. I expected to get up in the morning, morning and do them before I went to work or worst case scenario, leave them soaking and do them when I came home from my lunch break. Not a dish, not a sink filled with dishes. I'm talking one or two dishes and maybe a mug. If my mother drank something before bed and I was getting her upstairs and I didn't have a chance to wash the dish and I was too tired to do it. And admittedly, since I went to visit a couple weeks ago, I've been really tired. I've had a lot going on. And yes, I'm on my phone all the time, but I'm taking care of strong prison wives and I'm making videos and doing these things that I love to do, but it's work. I'm not like scrolling through social media, just looking at pretty pictures on Instagram. It's all work. It's all related to something. So my sister tells me that I was pissed. I brushed it aside. My dad was nowhere to be found. I fed the baby. My mother was in there. My sister, my other sister was in there. And I was like, did you hear him have some sort of emotional outburst? She's like, I didn't. I don't know what happened. So then my dad walks in the room and I start making like under the breath, you know, really mature 13 year old under the breath comments. And he has another emotional outburst about how he's trying to make my mother chicken soup all on him, all on him. So he wanted to do this. Nobody asked me to do this. He wanted to do this. It was his thing. So there's carrots in the refrigerator that are soft, right? So I bought this enormous bag of carrots from Costco and I didn't go through them all fast enough. So they're really soft. My mother told me, do not throw them away. We will make soup out of them. My mother cannot throw anything away. Half the time I have to throw away bad food behind her back because she's, you know, she grew up very poor. She does not waste. She's not throw away. She'll find something to do with it. Whether it means giving herself salmonella or making one of us sick, serving us, you guys, I mentioned this in another video. I do not remember which one recently that I'm sure you've seen. If not, I'm not going to post it. I don't know which one it is. If I remember, I will. But point is, she told me, do not throw those carrots away. Well, all of a sudden, he's in the refrigerator having a fit about the carrots and how dare I? Why didn't I throw them away? So my mother comes to my defense and she was like, no, I told her not to throw them away. We'll make soup out of them. And I just go, I think I'm just the person tonight. I'm the person everyone's going to take their their problems out on I did something wrong I apologize and so finally my other sister walks in I am going to take a shower here it is eight o'clock at night I still hadn't showered after working out at four o'clock in the afternoon because I was taking care of the family and the kids and everybody else's needs yet I'm the person who does nothing so I go upstairs I take a shower and I was not about, I was not planning to go back downstairs because I am not dealing with that being the scapegoat for everybody. I do enough. Like I can't emotionally cannot handle another thing. So I was in the middle of at, writing Adam an email, just kind of venting and the phone rings and it's him. And I wasn't going to say anything about what was happening because I just didn't want to get emotional on the phone with him. I know he's going through a lot right now. That's my choice, right? So I'm waiting to hear from somebody back details on event and an event that I need to go to. And I had contacted this person twice and didn't hear anything back. Well, I'm one of those people, like, I feel bad. I feel like I'm bothering people if I am persistent, even though I need these details. People are waiting for me on these details. I need to make plans. Do I need to get a hotel room? Do I not? B but I'm not going to continue to bother somebody that's not responding to me. It's my personality. I need to work on it. This is why I'm not in sales. I'm just not good with being persistent because I feel like I'm bothering people. So he starts laying into me not mean, but like, I know you're, I know you're not like that, but come on, like you need to follow up with him. I said, I will call him when I get off of this call. And, and then like, I literally just lost it. And I was, I started crying. I was like, I'm not having a good day. And he goes, he was like, what's going on? Talk to me, tell me what's going on. And I explained everything that was going on. And he tried to talk me through it and he was like, I'm sorry, I'm not there to help you. And you know, like their guilt and he did the best he could. I mean, he was very good. He was very, very good. And I know he's stressed right now and he's, he's stressed about not being here. Right. But when his stress comes out about not being here, he gets like really like 
everything needs to happen. Like, here is an example. He was like, I had my team meeting the other day. This was not on our call last night, by the way. He was very good at supporting me. But this was like a couple days ago. He was like, and they don't have my birth certificate. And they don't have my whatever, some sort of, it's his birth certificate and some other form of something, his social security card. And it was sent in, but it was, according to them, never sent in. And he's like, and my mom's going away. And now she's not going to be back. And I was like, okay, but like, she could take care of it when she gets back, right? He's like, but I'm not going to be able to get any identification. Meaning, when he's released. Sweetheart, I love you so much, but do you think you're getting released before she comes back from her cruise at the end of December? But this is how he thinks. Like, it all has to happen tomorrow, because what if I get clemency? And da 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 And he makes himself crazy, right? So there's like five or six. That's just an example. And I said to him, I go, well, I have your power of attorney. Can I do it? Can I make those calls? Well, no, my mom lives there, blah, blah, blah. She'll take care of it, because he doesn't want to put any more on me. He knows how much I have going on right now with my own family. So last night, I was, I turned the conversation on him because, like, I was tired. I know there's nothing he can do. I know it stresses him out when I'm stressed out about this stuff and I know he gets stressed out about not being here to help me right not being here he knows if things were different he would be here to be able to first of all I wouldn't be living with my parents and second of all he would be able to take some of that burden off of me by helping with some of it although that's not his responsibility I mean I'm one of six but I'm doing 100% of the work but that's totally a different story for another time I do all this and I put this all on myself and I'm not complaining I want to help my mom of course I want to help my mom. I've never asked for anything back. I've not even asked for recognition. But what bothers me the most and what hurt my feelings the most was the fact that it was like, it was all negated. Like I don't do anything. Like I'm just some lazy person that is heartless and lets her be hurting and ill and I let the house be a mess. And so anyway, back to our call he's got like a whole priority list of things that he needs to do he's stressed out he doesn't know what he should do first what he should do next blah 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 we end the call i literally went to bed at 9 30 last night because there was no way in hell i was going downstairs to go back into the line of fire for things that i didn't even do like i was just literally the person that was the scapegoat for all of my dad's emotions last night so i get up this morning i'm get. i'm like not even thinking about it not that i was feeling better but i wasn't feeling like it was just over in my head it was over so I'm getting myself ready to go to work and it was over meaning I wasn't going to dwell on it. I was still upset at my dad for being like that. Right. So I hear him and I'm like, oh my God, please just hurry up. Like me, like hurry up, get done faster so you can get out of the house before you have to see him. Cause I didn't want to see him. I didn't want to communicate with him cause I'm still like, my feelings are hurt. So he's like, good morning. And I was like, hi. And then like, he looked away really quick. I could tell either my mother told him like lay off of her. Or he heard me bitching because I was not being quiet about my 13-year-old brattiness. So he was like, finally, like, I'm sorry about what I said last night. And he started to get emotional. And he's like, you know, I'm just, the stress is getting to me. And I know it is. Except I couldn't just forgive it. Like, I could forgive it, but I couldn't just let it go. Like, I couldn't just be like, oh, that's okay. Because if I said, oh, that's okay, that's okay to treat me like a piece of crap. And I said, Dad, I understand that you're stressed. We all are. I said, but the fact that you said that I don't do anything really hurt my feelings. I said, and yes, I'm on my phone all the time. But I'm on the phone because I'm working. I said, nobody works a 9-to-5 job, and that's it anymore. I was like, so I understand where you're coming from and I understand that you're upset I said but I do a lot and my feelings are still hurt but I have to go to work and I left and I left because I started to get emotional and I didn't want to cry in front of him I did one I didn't want to cry in front of him because I didn't want to make him feel worse and two like I just want it over and I got in my car and his car is blocking mine so I had to get out of the car it let me start it enough to warm it up but I had to go back inside and be like I need you to move my car and he I can see all over his face he's just spent emotionally I mean he's losing his wife he's losing his wife and she's all he's known since he was literally nine years old they met when they were nine years old they got married when they were early 20s but they they were like the only people that each other each other have dated not when they were nine but they grew up next door neighbors that's how they met which is so sweet but anyway like they are the most uh, he is the most codependent person that i've ever met in my life and my heart breaks because i know that 
and I hope this is not like a self-fulfilled prophecy, it's just more of my biggest fear, is that right after we lose my mom, he's gonna die of, he's gonna die of a broken heart. So I got in the car, <clears throat> he moved his car, I was crying. I just drove away. I didn't want him to see me crying. And I'm driving to work and all I could think was, oh my God, how am I going to get my eyes to stop looking like I'm crying? Because the last thing I want to do is go into work like the girl who's crying, right? So I'm thinking of like, and my eyes were red and bloodshot like this. They were like this. And I was like, oh my God, I'm thinking of things that it could be like I, my allergies are terrible today or, um, I don't know, maybe I'm coming down with a cold. My eyes are it, a cold in my eyes. Can't say it's pink eye because obviously people, you can't, you can't go to work with that. But then it popped in my head and I was like, not the first time, not the first time that a prison wife has had to dry her tears and think of some excuse why her eyes are red and watery and why she's not crying when she has to go in public to work or to wherever that we all have to go to go inside to this grocery store and get myself something to eat for lunch when my eyes look like this. So I wasn't planning on going anywhere for lunch. I was planning to go home and make this video and then just make myself something there for lunch really quick. But I couldn't because not that I couldn't, I could, but I drove past my house and my father's car was there. I forgot that today's Thursday for all, for some reason I've been thinking it's Friday all day because I have off tomorrow, which is Friday. And I just wasn't ready to go in. I was not ready to go in and have to have a conversation with him. I'm hurt. Like I'm really just hurt by what he said. And he said to me this morning, he's like, I know you do more for her than anybody else, including me. And I said, well, maybe I don't do more than you, but we do more than everybody else. And I don't need anything for that, but I just don't, I, I, I think that's something that needs to be acknowledged. And I shouldn't be the one that gets, like, I'm the, the punching bag for everybody else's emotions. I have so much on my plate right now. And all I want is a hug for my husband. And he can't be here. And it just sucks. And so, I'm like embarrassed that I'm going to post this video, first of all, but I'm telling you, some of my favorite YouTube videos are people who are making videos in this condition, so hopefully this resonates with somebody. And yes, Vlogmas is supposed to be happy, but also, it's a vlog, and it's real, and it's raw, and so I went into work today, this is so long, I went into work today, and I had a client who was really pissed off, he was sold the wrong package and he's mad so my boss well not my boss his boss my the rep the sales rep that's supposed to get on this call was supposed to lead this call and he's like she is only on this call me and another person the account manager and me are only on this call for backup you're leading the call he sold it wrong but what happens he tunes out the attorney the client that was sold the wrong package is an attorney starts addressing me with everything he's pissed at me and you guys I'm telling you I just felt like an empty sack like I just I was like I can uh, there's a bus driver sitting parked next to me and he's looking at me and I'm like sitting in my car having an emotional breakdown in the middle of a parking lot but anyway I just literally felt like empty like I'm not even nervous usually I get anxious about these calls because I don't like conflict I don't like confrontation and that kind of stuff and sometimes I don't feel like I'm good at my job like I'm not the most technical person. I don't speak the technical language. So I feel like I can't, I understand it and I know how to do it. I just can't speak it back. You know, like I say that with law too. Anyway, so I just felt like I wasn't even anxious about this call because I just felt like empty. I'm just like, I can't take anymore. So after I got off the call, like it is what it is. It was over. He was mad. Thank God he wasn't yelling at me, but he was like, I don't care what you have to tell me about the results of my campaign because it doesn't matter to me because I don't care about it. He was sold the wrong thing is the bottom line. I have nothing to do with his sale. Anyway, the whole thing came down on me. And after the call, I'm telling you, 
I feel like I got hit by a bus. I just feel drained emotionally. But here's what we do as prison wives, right? We feel our emotions. We let them out. And then we go on with the motions of life, right? We have to go to the gym. And one thing I'm so grateful for is the fact that I personally go to the gym because it's my release. Like, I can't hold all of this in. So the fact that, first of all, I'm getting it out through tears, through talking to you guys about it, through telling Adam about it last night, and the fact that I go and I get that physical release, I know that I'm not holding on to it, so um, it's not going to make me ill, right? I, I, that's just like a lesson to pass. Like, get it out somehow, whether it be crying, whether it be writing, whether it be blogging, whether it be running, whatever your thing is, whether that be, you know, venting to somebody on Strong Prison Wives, making a video, whatever it is, I will be editing out the window blowing. Oh, look, there's a girl I go to the gym with and her daughter. This is embarrassing. Um, get them all out. Get your emotions out. Don't let them build up in there because it's going to make you sick. So that's number one. Number two, what prison wives do is we we pick up our pieces and we figure out how to go on, right? So like holidays, here we go. Maybe this will be a Vlogmas video because the holidays hurt. A lot of us right now are hurting. We're actually in the process of filming a video and it's not just going to be me. There's going to be a whole bunch of guest stars telling you that, yes, we're hurting, but you're, you're worth figuring out how to enjoy the holidays. You deserve to enjoy the holidays, even though you feel sometimes like I did today, like an empty shell. You deserve, your soul deserves to be happy. Here's the email that I wrote back to Adam this morning after I explained to him what happened last night and how my dad apologized to me and how we're all just overly stressed. I said to him, I go, you I know you're stressed, right? We're fixers, of course. Like, I'm going through it right now, but I need to help him too because I know he's stressed, one, in there, and two, because I'm stressed and he can't be here to help me. So I said to him, I said, you told me a long time ago that you're on vacation right now, right? manipulated it in his head you're on vacation and you get to have fun how do we get you back there what on your to-do list right now because he has a to-do list a mile long and he doesn't know how he's gonna fit it all in in time ironic because the poor man has 213 years what on your list brings you the most joy figure it out and do that everything else will fall into place yesterday I hope you guys are still here 27 minutes later for, to get this point. Yesterday, when my sister told me that my dad was pissed off at me because I'm always on my phone, a lot of it is... Sorry, I forgot to shut off my notifications. A lot of that is editing these videos, making thumbnails, responding to comments, posting on social media, everything that I do for you guys, but it's also for me. Like, I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly get so much enjoyment and feel so fulfilled by doing this. Otherwise, I sure as hell would not be on YouTube hysterical crying on video. But being able to use this experience and what I go through to help you guys is so emotionally fulfilling to me. It gives a purpose to this 213 year sentence that I have, that I just don't have any control over. He doesn't deserve it. I don't deserve it. But if I could do something good with it and if I could help you through it, I feel like my purpose has been fulfilled on this earth or is being fulfilled through this. So I got self-conscious for a minute and I would put the phone away. But you know what? I pay my phone bill. I bought my phone. No one can tell me when I can and cannot be on this phone. And it's something that I will continue to do no matter who likes it or not, including my father, because I do help my mother as much as I possibly can. I do cook for her. I clean for her while in between fitting all of this stuff in on my phone. So I will continue. And I encourage you guys, not only like I just said, to find what it is to help you get your emotions out and release it all so you don't hold it in and make yourself sick or feel resentful towards him for putting you through this experience right now while he's in jail. But also I, inf I challenge you to look through your to-do list find what brings you joy, find what makes it fun. You're on vacation right now, right? He's on vacation, you're on vacation. You have this whole chunk of time to do something fun. 
what is fun, and then everything else on your to-do list make fall into place. But that's my lesson for you guys. Keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being over. But in the meantime, make sure you let out those emotions, find the fun in it, do what brings you joy, look at it as a vacation. Thank you so much, you guys. I cannot even thank you enough, honestly, for letting me cry with you, for giving me a shoulder to cry on, for being there for me when my husband can't be there for me. He's, he gets 15 minutes a phone call clips and he gets 15 minute actually I'm sorry yeah 15 minute phone call clips only 300 minutes a month those go really fast and he gets a half hour on email and he hunts any pecs so he can't really type very fast and that's all we get visits I think are capped right now until the spring because the weather is too bad so thank you guys for being my supplement and my support system lots of love from my heart to yours I will see you guys in the next one bye